So we'll start off by using a compass to make the moon. I have mine set to 1.5 inch radius to give us the size that we're working with. And as far as the feather goes, I'm taking this from one of my designs from the three feathers, but also modifying it a bit and scaling it down to match the moon size. And feel free to print out one of my designs for this project and you can make it as big or as small as you'd like. And let's number each of these pieces. Next, let's cut up these numbered sections. And it's also a good idea to make a copy of this so you have the original drawing to refer back to. So we're now ready to cut some glass and I've pre-selected some of the glass here. And we'll be using this glass cutter, the same one that I'm using for the giveaway, so you can see how it works in the glass cutting process. So first we'll trace the patterns onto the glass pieces and we'll number them just the same. and I'm adding some cutting oil to the blade to keep it lubricated. And just a tiny drop should do, too much becomes a mess. Kerosene works great too and is also a cheaper option, but you can pretty much use any cutting oil. So take the wheel and trace the line on the glass, applying some pressure to create a score line on the surface of the glass. Next, we'll use the running pliers to line up the etched line on the pliers to the score line on the glass and squeeze the pliers together to break the glass at that point. And if it wasn't a clean break, you can also use the grosing pliers to help pull and break away the glass at that point. And we'll repeat this with the rest of the glass pieces. Alright, for the moon, let's see if we can cut this in one cut and not have to do several cuts to get inside. So I'm going to use the ball end of this handle to tap the back of the glass and see if we can break it that way. Well, that wasn't the way to do it, but somebody else better than me out there is going to be able to do this. So let's give this one a redo. This time we'll do a few more score lines inside that inner cut, and then we'll use the grosing pliers to help pull all those pieces away. And before things get messy, let's wear these safety glasses to protect those instruments of vision. So doing it this way seems to work, but I promise you we'll revisit this in the future. The outer curves are much easier to cut, so let's finish cutting the rest of this moon. So we've got our cut pieces, and now we're ready to grind the glass. Keep the sponge wet by keeping the water or coolant in the bay reservoir. The sponge helps to keep the bit cool while you're grinding, as well as to keep it clean from all the glass shavings that's coming off of the glass. And once each piece is nice and ground and smooth, we'll clean everything with some water and dry completely for the next step. And now we're ready for the copper foiling. So we'll be using the 730 seconds of an inch width with the silver backing since we won't be using any patina for this particular project. So take the copper tape and wrap it around the edges of each piece, keeping it as nice and even as possible on the edge of the glass. And once you've made your way to the beginning, clip that off and fold it right over to overlap. And we'll use our fid tool to smooth and burnish everything onto the glass as best as we can. If you don't have a fid tool, you can use a wooden stick or something similar. The better the copper tape is on the glass, the better your soldering lines will be. So take your time on this step and we'll repeat this with the rest of the pieces. Okay, we are now ready for the soldering step. So I have my soldering station. This is an older model and it's discontinued, but Hakko is a good brand. I trust it a lot and so I would recommend anything that they make. But for the current model, I'll leave a link for you guys of something that I would recommend. And my temperature for this one is set to about 700 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. So you wanna start off at a lower temp and then start dialing it up uh, as you need to. And I'm using a soldering iron with the quarter inch tip. I've got my liquid flux and using a brush for the application. And the solder itself, this is a 60-40 solder. You can bend it out, let it sit there. So we're gonna tack two pieces, so add a little bit of flux between the two pieces. Grab your iron, melt a little bit of solder on there, and just do a little dab 
to connect the pieces. And I like the positioning of where everything is. These two first, a little bit of solder, melt it down. So you see that we've got the three spots that we just tacked on. It's only held together on this side right now, so just be careful when you're handling it. So now let's add solder to the rest of it. So just add flux and then add solder to get nice bead lines throughout. But make sure you don't stay in one place too long or else you may crack the glass or delaminate the copper foil. Just keep your temperatures down at first and figure out a nice melting point. You'll have to play with it depending on the speed of which you're soldering and also the piece and how hot things are getting. And when you're doing the edges, just make sure to keep things horizontal so the flow of the solder is nice and even. And let's finish up our soldering by adding some jump rings so we can connect the moon and feather and have a way to hang them. Now jump rings could be a little difficult to put on so using the needle nose pliers and a clamp of some sort could help but I'm just being lazy and haven't set up a solution for this yet. After we're done with the soldering, we'll scrub and clean off all the flux. I like to use CJ's flux remover, but you can use plain soap and water too. Dry everything completely and it's time to polish. I'm using Leva's stained glass polish and this gives a nice and bright shine to the silver solder. You can use fine steel wool and then wax it, but I find this polish is much brighter. And to finish up, all we have to do is add a chain to connect the moon and feather and a twine or a piece of rope to hang it. 